Professor, may I ask you a question? You don't often ask questions, Fanbot. So, sure, ask away. Why is there a growing resentment of AAA game studios? That's a simple question, but it doesn't have a simple answer. Please elaborate. There was a time when AAA game studios were considered the pinnacle of quality. Independent developers have always existed, but before the internet, they had a hard time getting their games into the hands of players. So, for most people, games from the big studios were the only games they knew about. Back then, things were really different from the way they are now. With a few exceptions, most games from the big studios didn't ship with huge game-breaking bugs. So, they had better QA back then. If the games shipped on consoles, then yes, with some exceptions. On PC, before the internet, making sure a game launched without game-breaking bugs was paramount. Game patches didn't become common until after the internet. Are you saying then that the internet and the ability to patch games after they ship made game developers lazy? No, of course not. This is the part where I said the answer to your question wasn't so simple. Nintendo resurrected the console market in the late 80s. During the 90s, IBM clone PCs beat out alternative platforms from Atari, Amiga, and Apple for playing games. Going into the 2000s, the number of gaming platforms was narrowed down to only a few major players. The 2000s can be considered a new video game golden age. It is during this decade that video games grew into an industry that today rivals Hollywood. But, by the mid-2000s, things started to change. You could say the gaming industry was starting to become a victim of its own success. How so? By the mid-2000s, the biggest game studios were all corporations. Not only did the big studios have to meet the expectations of their fans, but they had to meet the expectations of their stockholders. Also, most of the big studios brought in CEOs who had no video game industry experience. These were people with experience in retail, soft drinks, and fast food. They didn't understand the gaming industry at all. So they tried to apply their business sense to an industry they didn't understand. And it all went to hell. Oh, not all at once, but it did take a while. So, what were all the changes that happened? Well, you see, corporate shareholders expect a certain amount of growth in the companies they invest in. That growth is expected to be in the form of profits, which are expected to rise every fiscal year. So, Fanbot, how does a game company make their profits rise? They would produce more games. Exactly, but by itself that wasn't a problem. At least, not at first. It was everything else that eventually went along with the increase in output. Expansions and sequels to games have been around for a long time. A few of the big studios began milking their most popular franchises, releasing a new title almost every year. Some would make download content available on the day of launch, and in a few cases, the DLC was on the same disc as the game itself. Let me repeat that. You were asked to pay extra for content that came on the game disc you already paid for. Now the most recent thing is microtransactions for single-player games. Previously, they were just for multiplayer games, and before that, they were the biggest thing in mobile games. 
So all those things together is why people now resent Triple Game Studios. No, we need to get back to that increased output thing we were talking about before. I'd love to hear it, Professor, but I think we need to wait for part two. You're so right, Fanbot. Because I've got a lot to say, and it isn't going to be pretty. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Well, I'm no one's fool.